Welcome back to the homestead. I'm Jacob and today we're going to be troubleshooting and hopefully fixing our IntelliShock 120 fence charger from Premier One Supplies. Now you'll notice right now our sheep are not in their paddock. In fact, they are just out roaming the pasture, which is okay because we do have some per perimeter fencing and they're not going to get out anywhere. But I do prefer to, uh, to rotationally graze them across the pasture. I think that's just a better management procedure for our land. But here a little while back, I began to notice that the fencing wasn't keeping them in. The lambs first would find their way out the bottom or something like that. And then Michelle Jordan would follow, but she would take the entire bottom and just knock down one of the posts. And they, before that, they had been really well trained. They knew that that shock was going to happen. So I was trying to figure out what was up. And when we began to test the, uh, the fence, I was only getting two volts on any of these lines. And it just wasn't enough to deter them from finding their way out. So I checked the fence and everything was hooked up properly. We were grounded. I couldn't figure out what exactly was going wrong. Um, to make sure that my problem wasn't in the fence, I went ahead and just tested the clips. My fence is off right now, so I'm not gonna get hit. But I tested my fence. We plugged the ground up to the ground probe and the positive up to here. And still, we were only getting two volts coming out of the machine. And so the next thing I did to make sure that my problem wasn't in my wire or clips, I went ahead and removed those. And we tested directly at the terminal. Again, I put the ground probe on the ground terminal, put this on the positive, we were still getting two volts. So the next step was to check out whatever's going on inside of this thing. And really, the guts are pretty simple. We have our two batteries. They are going to plug into the circuit board right here. Instructions on where to put them or where to plug them are right on the side. So we're going to unplug those things. And I'm going to test the batteries. This is my ground probe. I've got it plugged into the negative wire coming out of the batteries. We'll connect the positive to the tester. We're getting 12 volts out of the battery, which apparently is a little bit low, but still is more than two. And so by doing that, we've traced the problem. We know it's not in the fence. We know it's not in the clips or the wires. It's not in the batteries. So the problem lies somewhere here on our circuit board. Now, before we continue with this video, I feel like it's important to let you know that I have absolutely zero affiliation with Premier One Supplies, other than the fact that I purchased and am currently using one of their products, uh, the Solar IntelliShock 120. So the rest of this video is truly my experience. It's just my experience. Your mileage may vary. But I was quite impressed with Premier One's customer service. Once I realized that my problem was somewhere in that circuit board, I called Premier One, I called the customer service line. Um, they are open, they're central time, and I'm in central time zone. I called them at 5.30, and I didn't figure they would pick up the phone, but lo and behold, they did. And when they did pick up, um, it was United States-based customer service with a representative who spoke fluent English. And not only that, but they knew their product. Usually, at least in my experience, if, uh, if I have to call customer service for something, everything is a script. You tell them, you tell them what's going on, and you can hear them clickety-clackety-clickety-clack, finding what they're supposed to say, and then the next step is clickety-clackety-click with the keyboard. This customer service representative knew the product, all the way down to the color scheme of this particular unit. See, the, solar, the IntelliShock 120, we have blue and red, but apparently the Solar IntelliShock 60, which is a step below this one, is blue and orange. So the customer service rep really knew the, the product. And after explaining what was going on, she gave me some steps to follow to make sure, rule out the fact that that slightly low battery was not my issue. We plugged the AC adapter into the machine and then retested the batteries and everything still tested out at two volts. And from there, she said, well, it is most likely a transformer problem. 
and they offered to send me the transformer and a replacement for the the entire board for free of course it's under warranty we've had this thing for a little less than a year so it's it should be fully covered and they honored that no questions asked so my experience with premier one supplies so far has been pretty good um, now we're going to take this machine inside i did get the repair in the mail yesterday i believe so we're going to try and install this thing we're going to start by cracking this thing open got everything unhooked i've, I've unhooked the solar panel as well and we're going to be working on this end so you're going to need something like a butter knife or a flathead screwdriver or something like that and we're going to just right in here we're going to have to get in between the red and the blue um now i did ask the customer service rep on the phone if there was any kind of seal in here i know with a lot of computers if you crack open the case there's a sticker that seals these two seams together and if that sticker gets broken then you've lost your warranty there's nothing like that on this unit it's actually made so that you can get into it it's just not made where it's easy to get into so we're going to all right we've got him between the two pieces i'm going to kind of work my way around yeah. Dang it. there we go So when you, when you get this thing popped up, you have to lift up and this has to pull out from the little closing mechanism. And once you're in, this is it. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple for such a pricey machine, huh? So this is the board and I believe this is going to be the transformer. This is the part that the customer service rep suspects is the problem so let's check out the solution we've got this is probably just a packing slip right a oh, packing slip and even um some instructions on how to replace all this stuff so we have our transformer we have our circuit board we're going to start by replacing the transformer and hopefully that works this thing's all bubble wrapped in. Maybe we can do some ASMR. Whatever. Oh, I can't get into this thing. Almost there. All right. So, it's like, this is going to stick to the bottom, so this is going to be some sticky tape or some glue of some kind, and the transformer is going to sit this way. Looks like we've got a red and black wire, and then a black and white wire. So looking in here, it looks like the side with red and black is going to go red and black. The side with black and white is going to run through here and plug in there. Black and white. Now let's see if I can get this thing out of here without destroying anything else. Start by removing all the wires. Okay. Here. So again, it's black red. Actually, let me go ahead and pull this first. That way, I don't forget the orientation of the wires. Yeah, see, there's the sticky part that's going to be on the bottom of the new one. I'm going to place this over here. Thing is going to orient this direction black and red. We will peel the sticky or the cover from the sticky. It's gonna go right here. Press it down real good. Black wire goes over here. Red wire goes over here. Alrighty, I will bring these over. 
tuck them down into the little slot where they're supposed to go. And we'll remove the white wire first from the circuit board. I don't know that it matters. That's just the first one that I happen to grab. And replace. And now the black wire. And it is there. Okay. Everything seems to be secure and in its place. We're going to put this thing back. The little window goes over the circuit board for orientation purposes. Remember, you got to slide this these little teeth into their slots there, and then snap the lid back in place. Uh, we're going to connect our batteries back. All right, so this is going to go here. And that is going to go here. Let's close the lid. Yeah, please close. Sweet. So far, so good. Now, for a test. And so the ground probe is going to go on the ground terminal. And this is the positive. And now that was the problem. We are running 11.9. And that should be plenty to shock a sheep back into submission. Let's go take this out and hook it back up. All right. And where we were getting a red and green or green and red flash, now we are just getting green. That is a good sign. And now for the big test. Let's see what we're getting. Ah, there we go. 11, 3, 11, 6. 11, 9. Let's test up here. 11, 7. I do believe that's going to be enough to fix our little problem. Now let's go lure these sheep back in. All right, there they are. All finally back in where they're supposed to be. Now let's wait and see if one of them tests the fence. So with this particular fence charger, it's a pulse charger. So there's not constant electricity flowing through the lines. You can hear it click every second or so. And with each click, that's a pulse of electricity flowing through. Oh, there it went. So they can touch the line without being shocked, but if they stay on it, that's when it'll get them. And Michelle Jordan, I think, just learned her lesson. And that's what we were needing to see. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If so, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Leave us a thoughtful comment. And if you're interested in following along as we continue to try and turn our home into a homestead, then be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll know when to be back for more daily sustainable living.